We've all heard the expression, just because you think it, doesn't make it true. And this is something that both the right and the left use on each other all the time in different ways. The irony, of course, being that this is the anti-materialist position being used by rightists, which are idealists. Here's something important. An important part of it, just because the system disagrees with you or opposes what you say or opposes what you want to do, that doesn't make you right. And if that's somebody else, it doesn't make them right. For example, if someone took the position of wanting to completely abolish capitalism, which is what the system is, capitalism, and you want to abolish that, the system would therefore be antagonistic towards that, and for obvious reasons. But let's say you're somebody who just wanted to run around shooting immigrants. Now, the system would oppose that too, because it would be incredibly harmful to capitalist society. It would, great, it would create a great deal of instability. It would cause all kinds of problems that would not be good for the bottom line, which is profits. And the system would oppose that. Does that mean that subject B is correct? Does that mean it's right to go around or it's the correct thing to do to go around shooting immigrants? No, of course not. But isn't that kind of the basis of a lot of rightist ideology? Well, they oppose who the current prime minister slash president is and opposes what they stand for, therefore they're right. And we'll use that as an example. Oh, you see how this person who was a part of the trucker protest got arrested and charged and convicted? See, that's what happens when you, when you stand up to the power. Except that that doesn't mean that you're right. Just because you're part of some kind of quasi-cult like the, the, the trucker protests were, that, and they oppose the government, and they oppose Trudeau, that doesn't mean that they're right. Now, they're a wholly owned subsidiary of the Conservative Party of Canada, but that's not really the point. So when they walk around saying, oh, the Democrats are involved in human trafficking and they're trafficking kids and they're, they're doing the big evil, which is complete and utter nonsense. There is human trafficking, of course, probably one of the oldest industries that there probably has ever been and has been around forever, not necessarily based on sex, cheap labor, any other manner of reasons. And just because someone rails that, says that, oh, the Democrats are doing this, the, de the Democrats are sex trafficking, there's the, there's the John Podesta nonsense, etc. And then the Democratic Party ends up censoring that or blocking people who say that or denouncing people who say that, that doesn't make it true. But the thing is they turn around and use that as an example of them being right. And they do. And it's a complete logical fallacy. The claim is false. And just because those you are accusing reject that, that doesn't mean it's true and it's happening. But that is, that is the logical process for people on the right. If the system is against it, it must therefore be right. If the Democrats are against it, it's probably the right position. Many of people say that Trump is the right man for the job of president because the system hates him. And, and not even just like mainstream politicians, but people inside, the people who hold real, real power, like intelligence agencies, etc., also don't want him in there. Because he's a goof who screws things up. He's completely inconsistent. It was, from their own description, incredibly difficult to get him to, just to do his basic job. That doesn't mean he's the right man for the job. Just because the system doesn't like him doesn't mean he's part of some great access against the, the evil, gigantic system. He's as much of a narcissistic greed bag as the rest of them. He's just much more open about it. That, that doesn't mean 
he would make a better president or that he represents everything that is against the system or he's against the deep state. If there really was this great monolithic deep state that was secretly controlling everything, how did he get to be president? If they can shoot Kennedy and get away with it, then they can shoot his stupid ass and get away with it. I mean, th think about this rationally f from, this, from this level. The Republican Party doesn't want him because he doesn't really represent the interests of the party, which is the people funding that party. And the same goes for the Democrats. I mean, if you really think a political party does anything but carry out the interests of the wealthy elite who are backing them, you're... I'm sorry, this is like some kind of U.S. Revolutionary War idealism that's going through your mind, whether that be Republican or Democrat. They just represent different interests within the ruling elite, the very high of the capitalist class and the capitalist class in general. The left does the same thing. Now, when I say left, I want to speak very specifically to the left, not liberals, not the Democratic Party, the left. The left, which was created in opposition to the idea that it can only be liberal or conservative. I, I really shouldn't have to explain that, but in most mainstream politics, it's believed that anybody who is a liberal is also left, which they're not. They're still a part of that same system. Just want to put a happy face on it. Now, the left does the same thing all the time. Look at what Vladimir Putin is, literally a millionaire who uses his status and his history as a member of the KGB to keep himself the leader of Russia. He's not anti-establishment. He is the establishment. He has the other parties, including the uh, Communist Party of the Russian Federation, doing his bidding. When he can't legally be elected to a position again, he creates a new one that he can be elected to. Just because Putin is against the West doesn't mean he's the solution to it. When you, you turn around and you see Russia and China are both capitalist, they're both also imperialist. But because they oppose the West and the crimes that are committed by the West, that doesn't mean that they're the solution. Like, you understand what I'm trying to say? That just because a tool is not, just because a tool could theoretically do a job doesn't mean it's the right one for it. And that's the problem with this so-called left. At the point now at which these people are not left, they're just right deviationists. Putin doesn't represent the world's poor. He doesn't represent the, the, the poor and exploited. He doesn't represent any kind of resistance to global oppression. He's a part of that same system. Like somehow he's the good capitalist or something or some kind of nonsense like Chinese billionaires being the people's billionaires or some kind of completely idiotic conception like that. And I think to some degree the creation of these things or that so many people have gone over to this is a good thing because people who never were leftists to begin with they were only contrarian deep down in their hearts have exposed themselves I mean you could say the same thing of the rad lips basically the liberal version of that because when you confront them with it and you say yeah Putin is literally a millionaire businessman, maybe even a billionaire. And he, over, he oversees and f facilitates a capitalist system. Yeah, but he's against the West. So? What does that mean, against the West? He's against the U.S. imperialism, so you're replacing one imperialism with another? Or even one capitalism with another? Like, you, you know that that's a complete logical fallacy, right? In terms of Marxism, that would be a complete logical fallacy. It doesn't make any sense. And Lenin already wrote on this subject. I could give you a detailed argument as to why that would be wrong, but I know the vast majority of them aren't going to listen. So here's a Lenin quote. 
that they're just going to ignore. Because for these people, it was never about revolution. It was never about trying to put an end to an oppressive, exploitive system when they turn around and just support that same oppressive, exploitive system. It's just one interest of ruling elite in several countries and the ruling elite in the United States. You're not fundamentally changing anything. The system is still the same. That's why Lenin said not to do that, because it doesn't work. And that's the whole point. For a lot of these people, if you keep digging into why they support Russia, why they support China, and sooner or later, the words that are going to come out of their mouth is the global homo conspiracy. The idea that there really is some kind of big conspiracy for people to your kids and to do all kinds of things to sexualize your kids, to do to traffic them, to turn them into things, and it's part of some evil plot. And some of them will go far as to admit that really they it, it's just they're blaming Satanism. Which from a materialist standpoint is laughable because we're supposed to be materialists here there is no God God is not a materialist concept it's an idealist concept now me personally I do have my religion but it stays out of Marxism and it stays out of materialism because it is antithetical to that in my personal opinion I don't care if anybody believes my religion or not, it's not relevant. And I'm not aiming for the supremacy of my religion, I'm aiming for the supremacy of Marxist theory, which is, well, pretty much the only thing that's ever been proven to work. So you, you can see that, that's why. But for a lot of them, it really does come down to this global homo conspiracy. That it's the, everybody's trying, these, they, the, the globalists or, the, or any other particular religion like that, are secretly trying to create weak men and then feminize them so they're easier to control. And oh, You know, you sound exactly like Alex Jones, just, just to let you know, he was saying the same thing. There's no conspiracy. It's just capitalism. Even Marx decried conspiracy theories as being essentially useless itself. And we've all seen the meme of uh, Karl Marx sitting there, you know, with the one hand in the shirt saying, uh, uh, Illuminati, I think you mean ruling class, bro, because it's true. But apparently all these people have just forgotten that. These people who are supposedly left have abandoned all of that for believing in some kind of, frankly, idiotic religious concept. There's religious stuff that's not idiotic, and there's some that really is. Like, denying evolution is pretty idiotic. That's a scientifically proven fact. And that's what they're doing here. They're not really against capitalism, because then why would they be turning around and supporting another capitalism? And then coming up with some like ri ridiculous mental gymnastics like, Oh, they're billionaires, but they're like socialist billionaires because private accumulation of wealth is socialism because I eat paint chips. Or some kind of nonsense like that. The materialism part has been completely forgotten. And that's the point. And you know why? The same thing that I said 10 years ago. The same thing the LLCO said 12 years ago. The same thing the It's Right to Rebel message board said when they essentially created the basis for third worldism said. In times of crisis, the advanced countries, or what we would now call the first world countries, don't tend towards revolution. They tend towards fascism. Look at how many Marxists around you have suddenly gone on this huge right deviation, pushing even rightist nonsense angles, allying with the right, being against war, 
and well, what they really mean is the United States being at war, not war in general, because they turn around and do everything they can to support Russian military intervention and Russian military imperialism. But but you've seen it. How much of it, how many of them have made such a hard right that some of these people who were your friends, you don't even recognize them anymore? And how many of these rightist ideas keep springing up in supposedly leftist individuals? Because that really is and was always our theory as third worldists that when crisis comes they're not going to turn revolutionary they're going to turn more reactionary and what they're going to do is try to save that system so they can keep all the benefits that they've had from society rather than overthrowing it losing a lot of those benefits and creating a more just and equitable world the privilege of first world people will be defended at any cost. And in the case like this, these rightists are absolutely no different than Ben Shapiro. They both end up taking the side of the right, replace Israel with the United States, and you've got the same thing. Fundamentally, it changes nothing. Because what does it mean when you have this CPI, for example, where all the leftists reject you and your only allies are fascists and other assorted rightists. And then get confused when rightists say that they would unlive you. Yeah, they're rightists, that's, that's what they do. They are opposed to leftist ideas. And that the whole pandering to them thing, which I wouldn't call pandering, I would call selling out to, because that's what a lot of first world parties do in these situations. There you go. What's been forgotten here is material analysis or materialism in general. And right now, as it stands, Marxism looks really goddamn bad because of these people who would rather simp for China or Russia rather than do a goddamn materialist analysis and understand that these are competing imperialist powers. Lenin literally wrote the book on all of this. He wrote all of it during World War I, even before World War I. He wrote everything that's happening now. He wrote about. You think this wasn't the case back then too? Of course it was. It was pretty much the same thing. Oh, this capitalist country, and then there's this capitalist country, and Lynn said, uh, yeah, no. No thanks, bro. That's not our way. We're Marxists. We have a, a material analysis to follow, not simply jumping on another capitalist bandwagon. But that's how it is. And I've explained why it is. And that is what this video is about. And that's what I mean when I say, just because what you're doing, the system is opposed to, or what you believe is opposed by the system, that doesn't make it right. And as it stands right now, when you consider what passed, what kind of garbage passes for Marxism in the first world, ideologically, the anarchists have us beat. Because they're not the ones going around. Yeah, I know there's some social media ones that are running off and joining Ukraine or joining uh, Rojava when they were essentially just US tools, etc. But those are the exception, not the rule. And in this case, they're up on us on this one. Not because they're like, so great, but because we suck. And what the left in the first world needs to do is get it together so that we don't suck. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.